Generic greetings and welcome to Airships Conquer the Skies. Once again, today's beverage is... <sighs> nice cup of green tea, very tasty. So, there's been an update and although it's currently in beta as of the time recording, it may not be by the time you see the video. Irregardless, I thought I would check it out because it's added some new stuff and that can't be all bad. Let's go to Design and Airship Editor and we'll go through some of the stuff. It's not going to be an exhaustive list by any means, but just enough to uh, you know get to grips with some of the new gear. So, we've got things like a torpedo bomber now. Planes, I believe, have been rebalanced a little bit. They've now got more health and um, things like that, so that's okay. You can see, yeah, it's a, a torpedo plane tier 5. I like plane launches a single aerial torpedo at its opponents before returning to rearm. I'm going to check that out at some point. I've got uh, some designs we can load up and uh, retrofit. I'm not going to be building brand new ships, so not necessarily anyway. If we go over to weapons, this is where the bulk of the new stuff is. We've got things like an aerial charge now. So aerial charges, a tank of charged suspendium dust carrying aloft a bomb fuse to explode on contact, often deployed en masse for area denial. So it's sort of a... I guess a, a sort of short range flak type thing. Um, it does have a range of, uh, what does it say? Splash damage is 7 meters, which is pretty good, and 10 degree out of fire. Maximum accurate range, 170 meters, so not that long compared to a standard flat gun. If we go to a flat cannon, we can see it's, uh, yeah, maximum accurate range is 1,300 meters. So, yeah, the... Um, the uh, aerial charges are used pretty much yeah, on mass, and you just go thump and see what happens. Uh, we've got a ballista, which is just, well, it's a ballista, isn't it? It's uh, basically a device for flinging a piece of dead tree at someone, and, well, generally tipped with a non ferrous or ferrous metal. But uh, yeah, it's a torsion ballista, simple but effective against lightly armoured targets. Yes, not traditionally good against several feet of stone. We've got things like, where is it? A front bottom turret and a front turret. There we go. You can see these, uh, well, the turrets, aren't we? We've had turrets from the game in previous things, like, so we've got things like, um, well, things like cannons and stuff like that, and cannon turrets, but uh, these are a new addition, and there's been a lot of mods with uh, adds things like this as well. But yeah, it's a nice, interesting turret. We have... Where were we at? Front bottom turret there, Gatling gun, that's been in the game for a while, flamethrower, same thing, grape shot, harpoon, um, heavy turrets, uh, uh, sponsons. Now, these are interesting ones because there's a light sponson, and there's a, a standard sponsor, and there we go. And you can see their arc is in front, okay? So they fire, I believe, is it like 45 degrees? Uh, arc fire 30 degrees, but they can be stacked. They don't, uh, they aren't affected by the shot in front because the class is like sticking out from the side rather than, um, rather than this typical stuff, which like, things like a rifle, you can see it has this line. You can't place anything in front of it, it would block the shot. These ones, not so much. So I can see that being very, very powerful. However, what's their downside? HP 110, um... Max market range 740? Yeah, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Anyway, we'll try those out in a bit. Um, we've got things like... Uh, Sponsons, is that it? I think that might be about it. Oh, you've got rear turrets as well, which just, yeah, be sort of clones in it of the other stuff. Eh. So, basically, turrets, um, Sponsons, and uh, a plane thing, I think is the most interesting one. Actually, the aerial charges might be cool as well. Let's let's firstly, let's firstly have a look at the planes. So, we're going to go to open design here, and we'll look at the Excalibur. No, maybe not. The Harrier. The Harrier is probably the best thing to look at. So this is one of the things we made uh, in previous editions. I'm just going to remove all of the uh, all of the like the, the planes on this thing and all of the flak because we don't need any of that. And what we're going to do is just shove on some of the new stuff. So we've got for a torpedo bomber and we should be able to fit a couple of these on. So one there, one there, one there, and one there. So there's four of them. That's okay. We can also put some weapons on it. So I could put the aerial charges on it, but I don't think it'll be effective in this build. Um, I think we'll put some of these uh, ballistas on like that, and you can stack them like that, so there we are. Do they require ammo? I'm guessing they do. It is reload time, four seconds. Well, I mean, obviously they will require ammo, but they won't uh, need anything else. Hmm, there we go. So that's a... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fairly terrible design, but uh, we're just going to stick with it because we want to try it out. Looks like there's no way uh, you can get from the top to the bottom. You can see there's ladders going down there, but no up, so you can't uh, you can't stack these ones. Um, front turret, should we put one of those on? I mean, we could shove one on there just for just for a laugh. Uh, the disadvantage with those is, as you can see there, they again don't have a way to get right in from the top there. That's I would have thought you would. It means you can't have like a a really long sticky out like B 
bit at the bottom, top or bottom. Hmm. Anyway, so there we go. They're always going to have to be like three wide in order to be able to go inside them. So there's there's a really, really horrible looking thing. Uh, we will rename this as um, Harriet Test 1. And we'll save the design. And that should do us quite nicely. And let's go over to the combat area. So we'll have it daytime. We'll go for add an airship. We'll go for Harrier Test 1. And we're going to put it against probably a building of some kind. So add building. Uh, we've got things like dark cubes and stuff like that. This is not going to be a, a test of oh, the GDS to look at the state of that. Uh, white lookout. I think we'll probably put it the dark cube version 3 perhaps. Uh, or maybe... Uh, maybe just a standard dark cube because it's the smallest one. As I said, it's not going to be a fair test. In terms of points, you can see we're on 3,000 almost, just shy of it. And they're on, well, <laughs> yeah, 572. So a lot, 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 lot less. This is just trying out some of the new stuff. So we'll just uh, click start and we'll see these going away. Uh, immediately, you can see the uh, harpoons going there. I'm guessing they're not going to do a lot of damage. We'll go to quarter speed and you can see they're... Yeah, doing pretty much nothing. Um, oh, and there's the torpedo that's been dropped. And is that going to be a bit more effective? Yes, that is somewhat more effective, isn't it? <laughs> Aerial torpedo is my um, favourite thing in this. And these planes, yeah, they're pretty good. They do seem to drop them at a bit of a random rate there. What I mean is, like, one of them dropped from here and one of them is dropping it really far up. So it's not really a torpedo, that's more of just a bomb. But, uh, yeah, they don't seem to be terribly accurate, but, I mean, look at the damage that they're causing. And um, I'm very actually surprised of just how fast this thing's firing. Them, them uh, harpoons are firing really, really fast. Also, they're not terribly accurate, and the speed is an issue. There's going to be another torpedo that it just... <laughs> it just shot itself down. <laughs> it took itself out. It got too low, and the torpedo splash hit itself, and then it landed, well, I say it landed, it um, careered into a tree. Um, and there we go, there's a victory. We'll go back over to that one, um, and we'll check out, we'll do the same thing again, we'll have a bit of a fair fight. So we'll say, add airship, and we're going to have the Harrier test there, and we want something about 3,000. So add airship, um, in terms of about the same points cost, um... Nothing really. There's the Barry, the Botfly, the Coventry. Um, these are all fairly broken ships. Um, I think we'll put the. See, the, that one was always just broken completely. High level, well armored bomber. I believe bombs have been rebalanced a little bit now so that they, uh, they no longer have. They're no longer very extremely accurate. Um, so let's just start the fight. So we are still overpointed here. And, oh, see that? Look, the torpedo goes up. To be fair, it, it does say it's a torpedo. I'm going to quickly move before it can start. Well, it's going to get bombs out anyway, but I'm just going to start moving. And no, I'm not because apparently it takes forever to do that. Um, you can see the torpedoes are doing a massive amount of damage there. A hell of a lot of damage. They really are doing it in. Um, they are rearming the torpedoes. Look, like you can see this someone with a... Well, he's basically hammering the uh, the back of it. <laughs> yes, these only have one shot, but there's the torpedoes going out. Oh, it looks like they missed completely, and that one's... Yeah, these are really, really effective, these things. And once again, we're going to order this to uh, move to there and then flip. All I'm trying to do is um, keep moving, because it's going to do it's gonna do a single pass like that and do um, a fair amount of damage, although we have taken uh, the chin off this thing now, so it's uh, <laughs> it's got no it's got no jaw. Um... And it's still got some secondaries there. Yeah, there's got some secondary explosions going on. There's the uh, bombs coming out there. I'm still just trying to move. I'm just going to issue another order. Just try and keep that momentum up, you see. This thing was never supposed to be very, very quick. It is, after all, a carrier. I'm, <laughs> I'm not too keen on whether the torpedoes just get launched and they go up. But to be fair, it does say torpedo. So, you know, they are powered. They are powered. I think you can actually see a little bit of suspendium rock in there. Let's pause it. Um, yeah, so you can see that that's like supposed to be a bit of suspendium. It's got like suspendium engine in there. So that'll uh, propel it. Speaking of propelling, this thing doesn't seem to be be propelled at all now. In fact, it's going to go to a point where we can probably flip now and start getting our guns in there. These torpedo bombers are very, very powerful. I'm going to check the cost on them, but um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be... Oh, there we go, look. There's that gone. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be... Uh, it doesn't seem to be as 
wouldn't say weak as the other planes, but I've never found them to be terribly effective. Uh, in terms of the stuff on the front, blisters, yeah, they're the cheap and they're cheerful, and you can probably use a lot of them and uh, make a fairly reasonable ship. Um, and the turret, the turret, yeah, there's nothing special about it. It just seems to be all right, I guess. There's another victory. Let's go over to the airship editor once more. And we're going to open a design. We're actually going to load up the one we've just fought there. Instead of these bombs on it, I want to I want to remove all of the bomb bays. And instead of having those, I'm going to put, I think, some... Probably put some sponsons on it. So we'll start from the back there and work our way forward. As I said, because you can... Like load them up like that, you can probably get a fairly powerful ship, um, and we could probably like double double stack it. You see, so that's what I'll do. I'll double stack it like so, and we will actually be very. Uh, would we be able to do that? Actually, what we'll do is we'll we'll might as well finish it off here because this might be something we'll keep. And uh, the problem is we can't get down the front. That's a that's a disadvantage. That's a big disadvantage actually. Let's remove some of these because I want to be able to have access um, at the front and back. Because obviously to rearm it, well, we'll need that. Um, ideally, we'd have one right at the front, but I just don't think it'll be able to fit in. So there's that like so. Um, we will go over to the structural, not structural, it'll be in shapes and decorations. And we'll go down to slope there, and then we'll put a slope in um, there perhaps, and that one can go there. And I don't want to put a two in there, maybe. I'll put that in there. And then that in there. And then I think we have a space. I think we have a square. I'm sure there's a square. I know there's a square. Just finding it. There we go. One by one filler block. And there we go. Um, we're going to rename this. Ooh, careful now. Uh, we'll rename this the... Um, I have no idea. Um, it's just the Testington. No, because we're just going to... It'll be Testington new. Testington final. Testington final, final. Testington final, final, final. And, you know, like... A, <laughs> like you re... Like doing a report. Um, <laughs> when you were like 13. Ah, I can't be bothered to rename it properly. Um... Let's go for... Uh, just... <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> We're going to call it testing and after all that. Save design. Can't be... Can't be... Can't be bothered to think up some clever or witty. Uh, let's go for... Airships. Uh, Testington. And its server ceiling is pathetic. Because it's now quite heavy. And it's also... Oh, it's not terribly overpointed. Um, let's go for a... Airship. Go for an airship. We're looking around the 2,300 area. I don't think we have anything other than what we've just built around that area. So what we'll do is we'll put in the Coventry. Because that's about right. That's about right. And that colour scheme is just terrible. Right, so we'll start the fight. And you can see immediately them shots whizzing out there. That was actually... Um, a decent opening barrage doesn't seem to have caused a tremendous amount of damage. You can see it's going to try and probably get behind us. The disadvantage that we will have is that these rockets can fire pretty much 90 degrees. So it's going to always try to get out of arc. I'm going to land on it. Damn it. It went right like that. And it'll probably do a flip. And it's already taken a hell of a lot of damage on the back end here. I'm going to have to flip around. I think I'm going to lose the suspendium chambers here. And this thing's going to fall right out of the sky. Uh, the disadvantage with this thing is the person driving it but also you can see these do seem to have lost a lot of they do seem to have lost a lot of them straight away yeah I mean we've already lost uh, two four six of them so I don't know if the, that was just bad luck or whether it was just a bad hit or something hmm. or whether it was just the nature of the beast there uh, let's go to leave on that one because I think we have lost that one we'll go back into combat we'll try out Probably same thing, and we'll put against it. Um, we'll have a building. Let's see what building. Because so the building, the GDS turret, the state of it, um, not balanced in the slightest. This fight probably I'm going to get absolutely sledged. I would imagine, uh, but let's try it out. So we'll start the fight, and you can see immediately the opening volley there. There seems to be a lot of spread, not much accuracy at all. It is on normal fire. Um, I'm going to put it on rapid fire because we do have a lot of ammo. Um, and you can see it's getting rearmed, reloaded. 
Yeah, they do seem to take a fair bit of damage there. That's a, that's all kinds of fire. Yep, someone has definitely left the stove on there. That is toasty. There we go. If we go to outside view, we should be able to see the cannons. There you go. So there's the cannons that stick on the outside. They don't seem to have a lot of health. I'll have to check. But they don't seem to have as much health as other stuff. But again, I'm not really basing that on anything other than just the in, these initial observations. And oh yeah, that's 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 landed on the floor in an aggressive manner. Otherwise, you're just crashing. Um, I quite like those though. Arc of fire is not great, and quite frankly, the damage is fairly poor. But I can see, I can see there being a nice supplementary weapon. I don't think I'd make a, I don't think I'd necessarily make a vessel just mount like like this and have. Have it just slowly burst around them. I think it's just a nice little addition thing. Anyway, so we'll leave that. Uh, we'll go over to the airship editor once more. I just want to double check the cost of that one compared to other things. So if we just take a standard cannon and we put on a sponson. Uh, that's not a sponson. The sponson there. Uh, the small sponson. Where is it? Light sponson. So okay. We're going to come back. We'll have a look at all three. So. The the standard cannon is how much is it? Uh, does it tell us on this one? I don't see it. Cannon. So the cannon is seventy nine. The light sponson is fifty four, and the standard sponson is eighty six. Okay, fair enough. So. Let's have a look, just compare the two. Cannon, you can see immediately better arc of fire. It's got a range of, or maximum accurate range, 960. The other cannon's got 740, so not as good in that regard. It's got piercing damage 50 as opposed to piercing damage 40. Reload time is slightly, slightly less on the sponsor, but only by 0.6 seconds. And both with a crew recommended too. In terms of the HP, it's 110, and that one is 100. So actually, the sponson's got more, more HP. Hmm. Hmm. To be fair, I can't remember whether I armored the other one. Uh, and the smaller sponson is, yeah, just 25 damage. Yeah, the other stuff like that. It's not, not terrible. They're all right, those. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was just I didn't design it. Hang on. Um, didn't design it right. Did I not put armor on it? It does seem to be. Armoured. Um, steel wall, was it? Yeah, it's got steel wall on it, so it was armoured like the rest of it. Oh well, just the uh, look of the draw, I guess. Um, other things we can check out. We've got... Um, I guess that's really about it, isn't it? We've got... I mean, we've tried the front turrets. The top turrets. Yeah, try the blisters out. Aerial charges. We haven't tried those out. Okay, what I'll do. Open the design. I'll load up the... Um, the Leroy, actually, of all things, and we'll get rid of all this bit at the front because we just don't need it. We will put on some aerial charges like so. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. And obviously it's going to say, yeah, you don't have enough crew, so I will put some more crew on it. Um, that should be about right. It's going to also say we don't have enough supply hatches, so I'm going to put supply hatch there, supply hatch there. And actually, it would be nice to have a way into these. <laughs> Let's put those there. Um, we'll have some basic corridor with ladder that should connect rate those up, which it does. That's fine. And then we will go for some resources. And I think three small ammo stores should be sufficient. Uh, the problem is they're going to have to go up and around. But again, this is just a test bed. Um... save the design. Again, it doesn't really matter what we call because we're not going to be keeping these designs. Um, unless it's absolutely fantastic, in which case we will refine the design. Uh, so we want to add a airship and we'll put in the Leroy test and <laughs> look at the service ceiling. So you can see where the maximum range is. See that? That little white line there? Um, the white line just moving around the top. Yeah, 
So it was around here. So it's not much. Um, you don't really need, I guess, a high service ceiling, but if we add, uh, oh, it's 975 points. If we add an airship, uh, have we got anything around about that level? The barry is around about that level. Now, the barry will be something to probably, this might be a bit of an annoyance to face this uh, ship. So we're going to move this up to there, and again, not really a fair fight because we're, we are starting at the, uh, the correct height and with advantage. So we'll straight away move to there, and let's just see what this can do. So unpause it, and you can see immediately there's the charges. So basically it is just sort of death charges. I guess it's more of a hedgehog type weapon, isn't it? So it launches them out. Um, it's also, they also take a while to reach their intended target. Look at that, they're really slow to go. That makes them fairly useless against things like this. And they've just exploded and died. Okay, and the front foot, <laughs> the front fell off. Uh, I didn't work out. Okay, what I'll do? <laughs> New test. Um, combat. We'll have it as airship. The Harrier test on that side. Okay, and we want a airship, and we'll have it as the Leroy test. One, two, three. Very low level. So, points wise, we're very close. 2,925 against their 2,996. Okay. So, we will start the fight and immediately we're just going to charge forward. And do you want to change it so it's not terrible in everywhere? Dusk. <laughs> um, is that changing the armor? Oh, it's changing the lighting. I was wondering what that was about. See that? I thought, oh, it's uh, changing that, but it's actually uh, the lighting. I didn't realise it did that. Cool. Anyway, so, day fight, and we will start the fight. We will immediately order these to move to there. Now, remember, this thing is slow, and that means that hopefully when we fire, it should do a serious amount of damage. Um, It does neither. Um, It seems to be that plane is... Having some takeoff difficulty. I'm going to issue more orders to go back over here. And that's immediately a bit of a problem. Also, I don't know if there's a minimum range for these things, but I think we'll be finding that out shortly, won't we? Um, it's actually stuck us right in, which is problematic. Um, there's the shots going out. See that? They really are. They really do a lot of damage. I mean, it's, it's really peppered, that thing. I can see applications where this could be very useful. You could have, and we have built in the past, uh, some land ships which are solely based on uh, a very long bed with flat cannons all over it. We've done that several times. Um, in this case we haven't been able to take out this thing. Um, and I reckon you could probably make a flak vessel with the combination of these things as well as um, the flak cannons. With their speed being so low, I don't know how effective these would be. I mean, they've still got two planes running around. I mean, there's the, there's a the big bang. I can imagine if you have a, a full carrier, or actually what would probably be quite good to face would be the, um, the Hazar bears. That would be quite good. If we leave that, we'll try that out. So we'll go to combat, and we'll go to add airship. We're going to put in... Do I really want to put that in? Um, the Excalibur, perhaps? Why is this suddenly running terrible? There we go. Uh, there's the Excalibur, which is just completely oversized. Um, and, quite frankly, fairly useless. Uh... <laughs> It was our capital ship, and it's actually done all right in the past, I think. I know we had to change the front because it kept falling off. But anyway, we will add the... Oh, imagine that with torpedoes on, torpedo bombers on. Yeah. Anyway, so we'll add, uh, say, a land ship. Have we got one? There's the encroacher, and there's the Paris. See, that that there would be quite good, with, again, with torpedoes. It's quite expensive, though, for what it is. Um, but something that along those lines, something as flat as that... And you just put all them flat guns and the new uh, launches on it. Anyway, so we will add an airship. We're going to add the 
Leroy test. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five of those. We will add the, um, probably this thing. And add probably the Harrier test as well. And that should be, with a couple more, about right. One there. Uh, 16,210, 16,484. Wow, I didn't realize just how expensive that thing was. So that is about right in terms of pointage. So let's start that. We're going to pause it immediately and we're going to order these to go, go, go straight underneath it just so we can get all the flack out possible because these things will be grouped up and the further they, the further they travel, the um, less we'll probably have to fire. Uh, there's some missiles coming out. Oh my good grief. Um, are they firing? Oh yeah, there you go. Look, you can see the, uh, you can see the, <laughs> the myriad of shots there. Let's go to normal. Let's go to quarter speed. And you can see they're whizzing out, taking out pretty much all of their planes. Um, although I believe they're coming from, I think they're my planes actually. Some of them are. Yeah, the black ones, the black planes are my planes. That's not good. Um, and it looks like they're not firing against those, so they don't fire against those things. But they probably will take it out. Um, anyway, there's all the shots. See the damage that's getting caused. It's quite okay. Let's uh, take that thing in a bit closer. I want that thing coming in a bit closer, because there's no real need to keep it that far back. We'll order that to there. I'm going to that to there. There's a massive explosions because of the rockets. It also has a flamethrower, I believe. Yeah, that's a flamethrower. <laughs> little, little, little sticks coming in. So, I've got... <laughs> I've got... I've got sticks and... Oh, uh, that's a problem. We'll get to that in a moment. I've got sticks hitting their metal armor and they've got that honking space cannon coming back at me. Um, you might want to get out of the way. I'm going to issue an order, but quite frankly, I think it's futile. And Yep, that is not gone well. Historically, I think the way this thing did most damage is by just doing that, just crashing into stuff. Um, yeah, you can see the shots whizzing into them, and there's one there. See what damage that does. We'll follow that one directly. Bang. And this one. And, uh, they're all falling short, you see. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, that's going to hit nice, nice, no, no, there we go. Yeah, it, it's just spreading a lot of damage. I can see those being extremely effective against targets that are, um, have got a lot less armor. Because you can see it has peppered it, but no real, well, apart from the front falling off, there's been no real substantial damage to this thing. Um, and they're probably going to win anyway, just because they've got all of these hazards, which we can't really take out. We, if we had... If we had biplanes and triplanes, that would be okay, but we don't. We just have these bombers. Um, so there's really no way of... Oh, looks like that suspension chamber's taken a bit of a hit and just dropped right down there. It's also, for some reason, attached to that bit of rock at the back there. Um, torpedoes, we can engage them. Yeah, the torpedoes are probably going to... Probably going to do it. But yeah, you can see, look, they've got these things. They're, they're bombers and they're... Have they got just bombers left? Yeah, so they've just got some a couple of bombers there, and oh, and they've got the triplanes as well, and the aerial hussars. Yeah, so they're going to win just from that. Hmm. But yeah, that's uh, some of the stuff. What the hell is that firing? Oh, that's the mini guns on it. I forgot just how many <laughs> how many guns this thing's got. It's just armed to the teeth. Got flat cannons on the top. It's got the huge cannons on the bottom. I think originally had torpedoes. Oh, it does have torpedoes because they're the torpedoes going out. So it still has torpedoes. It's got the mini guns for taking out other aircraft. It's got aircraft of its own. A combination of um, triplanes and bombers. It's got aerial hazards. When the fronts are connected to the ship, it normally has a, a double, a dual. Uh, large rocket setup, which um, when it hits does a lot of damage. In fact, that didn't even hit, and it did a lot of damage. Um, and it's also got flamethrower. So basically, it's completely amped to the teeth. But it's also <laughs> total. It's also sixteen thousand uh, generic units of currency. So it's um, quite expensive. Anyway, there you go. That has been a little bit of a look at some of the new stuff. Yeah. Um, obviously, as like I said, the um, the patch 
is in beta as of the time recording, so um, it, it might not be by the time you watch this video or you can get hold of it. Um, typical, typical stuff to get hold of you, just um, the instructions are on Steam, basically you've got properties and beta tab and blah 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 blah. blah. Um, yeah, so I like that, I like some of them new additions. The, uh, my favourites is certainly the uh, planes, the torpedo planes, they're cool, I really like those. Um, still wish we had a better way to control stuff. Uh, for the planes, because they just, they just well, you say attack and they just do their own thing. It'd be nice to be able to say, keep the keep planes on deck or launch planes now and stuff. But, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe time will tell. <sighs> Why is it for some reason dragging around that pet rock? <laughs> I think it's went underneath and then raised up, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, just attached from that back bit there. It's not providing any lift at all, that thing. <laughs> Yeah, the top of stuff, the top of planes are like that. Um, those, those things there that, well, don't exist anymore. And um, the fire upwards, they're not too bad. Um, the sponsor stuff, it might, it's quite interesting. Um, I don't know how much I'll use them. Uh, like I say, I think it's good for filling stuff in. And also, it's going to open up a lot of design um, choices now because, obviously, a lot of the ships that tend to make, you've got this, you know, that all the weapons have to be, like, you can't stack them, so you get this like either real tall, like tall thing where you just put loads of guns on the front. Because um, having it, having stuff longer, because the archer fires forward, you can't like stack them and stuff. Whereas the 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 sponsons, you can have in a big row. So yeah, it's going to open up some uh, open up some uh, interesting design choices, I think. <laughs> Maybe not effective ones, but you know, might be able to uh, get away with some of those. But yeah, there you go. Uh, as I said, you can. Uh, Check that out. Links in the description so you can uh, check the game out yourself and uh, it's in the beta one. Maybe things will be changed. There might be some balance um, changes to things and whatnot. So we'll see. We'll see. As always, hope you have enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.